and welcome to Insomniac Attack on 91.3 KVLU. I'm Antonio Del Rio, and of course, Tuck is here with me. Buck, go ahead, play us some more. It's the best. Don't burn the witch. So, today, we are joined with some guests from Spooky Kids clothing brand. Or is it just a brand? Overall brand? Just the brand. Brand. Okay. Introduce yourself. Go ahead. Tell us about yourself. Hey guys and ghouls, I'm Hiller Hypnotic and I am the artist and co-founder of Spooky Kids Clothing. What's up everybody? My name is Alan Povela from Port Arthur, Texas, born and raised. And uh, I'm also co-founder and uh, manager of Spooky Kids Clothing. That's great. What inspired you guys to create this brand? We were always, uh, you know, we grew up like in uh, Port Arthur, Texas, you know, relatively like, you know, low income. And uh, also like we were always like into like, you know, like uh, uh, different kinds of like music and movies, comic books and stuff like that. And uh, we wanted to like, you know, like be, you know, designers or artists like since we were like 12 years old, right? And once you start growing up and like, you know, uh, society starts to like, as you're coming of age, society starts to like, uh, tell you to abandon some of these things, you know, and to start focusing like on like, you know, like uh, career, stability, family and stuff like that. And like, you know, we wanted to like continue like our passions and stuff like that and find like an avenue for it. And coming from like our low income background and stuff, like, that, like it was quite obvious like a lot of people like, you know, could use the help too so you know finding uh, like an avenue for our, our expressing ourselves our individuality and uh, helping others like as well like you know like uh, it just it just seemed like the perfect plan like for us and stuff uh, just like you know uh, to feel proud about like what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that's great so spooky kids it's what exactly is spooky kids exactly We're spooky kids. Like, we went to Memorial High School, and we were the goth kids, and everyone was like, you guys are the spooky kids. <laughs> and we already loved Marilyn Manson and the spooky kids, and so we just reincorporated that, oh. but added a Z for yeah. copyright reasons. Of course. I think it's a great idea. I wish you guys luck with that. Um, one of the big things, we met... At the, do you remember? What we oh, yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. we met that was at there. the suspension party. <laughs> Wasn't that yeah. intense? That was like a random way to yeah. meet. That's, yeah. Coincidentally enough, that is something that I've always wanted to do since I was twelve years old as well. Yeah. You know, it it almost like keeps on like coming back to like you know like uh, uh, our childhood and stuff like that, and just kind of continuing on like the things that we always wanted to do as children and stuff like that. Like you know, it's like what kind of adult would you would wanted to be? Yeah. And whenever you were kids and stuff, so. Whenever I heard, like, they were doing, like, you know, suspending and stuff, like, suspension stuff, like, you know, like, locally, I was like, I have to be there. Yeah. For whatever reason. And, like, it turned out so great. I got to meet you. I got to meet, like, so many, like, other, like, you know, like, great and interesting people. Uh, I found that place by accident. Like, I didn't even know what was going on. I had moved uh, to Beaumont, and probably, like, two weeks later, I was like, all right, it has to be a music scene here. So, the art studio is known for, like, live bands and stuff like that. So, I went. And, like, someone, they are like, yeah, we're doing body suspension. I was like, I kind of know what that is. I don't really know. And so I just stayed for it. And, like, it was a very interesting experience. And I'm glad I walked in on that because I, I met them. I met you guys and Steven, a.k.a. Tuck. You missed oh, out you on met that. Him? Oh, he missed out. Yeah, definitely. What were you doing? People putting in hooks the background. in them? I wasn't going to miss that. People, people voluntarily putting hooks in themselves. Oh yeah, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. You think you'll do it soon? Uh yeah, and in fact, like the the guy who was doing the suspension there and stuff like, like uh, did like a lot of like my piercings and stuff like, like uh, early Adam. outside. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. So shout out to Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Adam. Wherever you doing tattoos at? I think he was doing it like on uh, Golfway Drive in Port Arthur. So for me, I'm mixed. I'm black and Hispanic. Are you guys mixed? Like Hispanic, black, like. Um, I'm African American. Uh huh. Alan's Nicaraguan. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, like being, like the alternative, like minority that we are. 
Yes. Listen oh, to definitely. different bands yeah. that typical people like us don't listen to. What has been your experience with that? Um, well, honestly, in the South, it, it's mixed reviews. Like, some people love us because we're, like, uh, minorities. But then others are like, what are you doing listening to rock music? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, the responses, like, have been, like, like you know, like, varying and stuff like that. Like, you know, everyone's different. Like, you know, we live, like, in the Bible Belt. Yeah. So, like, some people, like, you know, like, respond, like, you know, like, with just, like, straight ignorance and stuff. And they say, like, you know, like, oh, like, you guys are, like, you know, getting, like, you know, tied up into the devil. Or you guys are, like, want to be white or something. Like that. But in actuality, everybody in, like, our scene in high school and stuff like that, we're all minorities. We're all from different backgrounds. Yeah. Our friends have, like, you know, like, been, like, all, you know, like, uh, different uh, from different like uh, Latin backgrounds and stuff like that, uh, mixed African American or uh, you know like Asian American and stuff as well, and we all just had like you know like just different tastes like in music from like uh, our family members or things like that. So uh, it's always been like something like we we had to like deal with, but it you know like it's kind of like what would we want to like it you know. Uh, do is to staying true to ourselves yeah. and then like we discovered like as time went on we, we started to discover more people that like had similar views and it even felt like as if uh, like you know from uh, lo local documentaries and stuff too I'm not saying local uh, underground mm -hmm. kind of like documentaries and stuff like afro punk and stuff like that. Right. when you start to realize that like you know you're part of a movement of reclaiming some of this history you know that you know it was brown people just like you that went on and started this music and stuff, you know? And it's just kind of like gotten away from like, you know, like from everybody. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it feels sometimes like you're a part of the generation that's like reclaiming like some of like, you know, this uh, music and stuff. Too. I agree. I agree. And one of the bands you guys mentioned was Tool and they came out with a new song. What are your thoughts on the new song? Um, well, we're happy with the new music because yeah. we've been looking forward to their new album for a long time. Yeah. It's been 13 years, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, 13 years. 13 years. You think they planned that out 13 years? They did no, it too. I think it's they just, did it on purpose. I think it's like, it's it's like James Maynard and James, James Keenan <laughs> kind of taking his time. I think all the band yeah. members of Tool are like that. So you don't think it's nothing to do with numerology? Uh -huh. I think he's like he was very alluding to that with Joe Rogan, his podcast. But he's also saying, "I'm I'm just gonna." It just so happened to be like that. You know, my wife just turned twenty-seven, like uh, just the, this weekend. Wow. Stuff. Do you think that they planned on it coinciding with uh, her birthday? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, Stephen? I don't know. Yeah, it it just happened, and it's okay. I'd wait forever for the new album if they decided to wait like a whole year or something. Yeah. Well. I don't think everyone's heard the song, so we're going to play the song right now on 91.3 KVLU. You're listening to Insomniac Attack. We'll be right back after a couple songs. We'll talk again. Keep it locked. I How was that? Sorry, but he's going to kick us out right now. He's going to say, like, you guys, you know, I expect you guys to be a lot different. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no. Oh yeah, he's using a little more synth now. He used to be a little against that. You know, like, you know, like yeah, some of this true. like blood and gore and violence and stuff. They're really... Awesome, but now we live in the hood. Now we live in the suburbs. Yeah. <laughs> in Port Arthur? Yeah. Is it really that bad out there? Not anymore. It's no, it's changed. They actually gentrified it. Oh yeah. 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 It's completely different I mean, when we grew up. Yeah, but we we do, we have like some like uh, pretty like crazy stories. Like we we've almost gotten to the point now, like you know, traveling from all these blue kids. We'll like tell like some of like these stories right like, now, and uh, it'll be like wild because like we'll be in Houston with like somebody from Nederland or something, and they had no idea like you know that, like, it was like this like in going to school memorial or something. Whenever we would have okay like uh, a Friday before like you know like a three day weekend or something. Like, yeah. Even, there's a riot going on. Right. Or yeah. just like a fight. Yes. Like, yeah. it's like, Sometimes it, it starts the moment we get exactly. off the bus. Yeah, yeah. And, it'll be like 50 then, on 50. And like then sometimes. what happens? The cops pepper spray the whole bottom of the school and then it goes up to the second floor. Yeah. And like oh, we all man. got it. Yeah, I 
I remember yeah, law school was yeah. like that. What were you doing there? I was just like fucking just like trying, trying to, to mind, your own, yeah, you mind your own business. That's the thing. You trying to mind your own business. <laughs> and it was just like, no, today like yeah. East Side and West Side decided that they were about to like, you know, like let's start a rumble. And it's a it's it's like almost like 50 style. Like we're like yeah. there's a whole wall of like people on one end wearing red and a whole line of people on the other side wearing blue. Oh. That's and how they just, I felt about the knockout game when like the bully, like the, oh, the I remember bullet, that. mostly, oh, yeah. they'd have a lock in their hand and they they make you line up. And it's like, who I'm going to knock out today, like with the, knock, the really? lock in their hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was people, old school, though. People got it a lot. I still that got was, a little more serious. <laughs> Wait, this was, that this was, was middle, middle school. school yeah. Don't you think it's kind of crazy now that it's like all middle school? It's like, it's yeah. basically the revenge of the nerds. It feels like, yeah. 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 Every, everyone's into comics. Into the I heard like his bass lines and stuff, like he was like playing like on the Ibanez. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Kendall's leader's bucket is so sad. I just like when he was black yeah. and like dark skin black. Playing <laughs> back like a guitar, like that was great. Like for, sometimes like we promote bands and stuff like that. We we have booked a couple. We booked a couple like shows like at like uh, local venues and stuff in the past. I was I've been following like Tilson Abazi for a long time. He was in a band called Reflux. I think it was Reflux. I did not listen to like, any of the stuff. It was more metalcore. Yeah. But he was still doing really interesting stuff. Yeah. It's kind Crazy like arpeggios and stuff. Yeah. But he went to the School of Atlanta, the Music School of Atlanta. Yeah. And he came back and was amazing. So. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like uh, if you, like uh, y'all remember Fallout Boy, right? Oh, a lot yeah. of people, they they use Fallout Boy to like they use that to fund their <laughs> side projects. That's what's weird because like their main guitarist, he's actually like a, he was he's a metal. A metal he's yeah, he metal. was a metalhead. Yeah, that's what I liked about like a lot of, like the like those yeah. big name like emo bands like that. We were talking about music. How come you guys never went the music route? You look like artists. You look like you're music artists. Well, we've done album art, but. We're not musically talented, but I did think about doing scratchy vocals for a band like Birdie Dell from the Distillers. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember those old DVDs that would come with CDs? Like yeah. I had this one like Hawthorne Heights DVD, and that's how I found about found out about Aiden, Bury Your Dead, and did I have that a trade. <laughs> I think you did. Was it, was it a Victory Records? It victory was Records. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a Victory that was a Records one. DVD. Yeah, those good were good times. times. What bands are you guys into now? Oh, such a big array. Necro Goblicon. Okay. Uh, okay. This Summer Slaughter lineup like this year and stuff like that's like pretty We're no, actually no, it's, going it's to a, the Secret Group show. Secret. The Secret Group Fest. What is this? Tell us all. It's oh, we want to know the secret now. We want to know <laughs> the secret. I'm it's not sure. <laughs> we we might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. It's at the Inside Out venue in Houston, Texas. And you guys got to see Pac-Man the movie because they're a very independent experimental band. I don't know if anybody's like familiar like with like that uh scrams and stuff like that, nineteen nineties, mm. two thousand five like or the number twelve looks like you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I heard that. Okay, yeah. Or like See You Space Cowboy, that's a newer band too that's kinda like Space in Cowboy. this genre. Yeah. That's that's the kind of music they play, mixed with Nintendo core. So uh, it's wild that like a lot of like, this like uh like classic emo scene culture is yeah. like kinda like coming back too. And you don't it's not just like in trap music. It it is like also like in like uh, you know uh, instrumental music and mm -hmm. stuff too. So oh, we we played C two A. He's an instrumentalist. He's yeah. in, he's big into like like anime too. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he had an album literally called Senpai EP. <laughs> Senpai EP. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> yeah. It it definitely is like a mixture of like genres and stuff now. Like people are definitely mixing things up. I mean, you got emo rap and like bands like Lil Uzi Vert. He's would you say he kind of like pioneered that loop? That, um, the we do okay. Like if when we're talking to like a person that like listens like to like top forty and stuff like uh -huh. that, it's like we have to cite him, right? Yeah. We were like uh, talking like uh, recently. Hillary had like uh, Hillary Hypnotic on our YouTube channel and stuff. Had a uh, interview with uh, LA based uh, trap rapper uh, Angel Nightmare. <laughs> Whenever we were talking like about like to like some people and inviting them out to like the show, like uh, we thought about like how to like you know describe him, and it was like the automatic like uh, go-to name was like Louis Vert. Yeah. 
it was like, oh man, we like we've gotten to a point where we have to like cite him and stuff like that, you know, just because like, uh, and like uh, talk of people would automatically say like, oh, I love him. This might be some music that I might be into, and I said like, you know, like yeah, because this guy's like a lot more like you know, uh, versed like you know in instruments and stuff like that too. He plays like in like you know several other like uh, metal bands and stuff like, you know, you know so. Mm -hmm. He knows his stuff, but like this is like a new experiment, you know, in uh, his career, you know, trap rapping and stuff. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's earnest, you know, like it comes like from a true place. He's really into like, you know, like the dark style and stuff, you yeah. know. He's not doing it for like views like or anything like that. I feel like some, maybe some SoundCloud rappers and stuff like that too, they see like the goth imagery and stuff like that. It's like a quick way like to like get some views, you know, yeah. st stand out. Yeah. I remember, uh, who's that? Denzel Curry kind of did that. Did you see that video? I think he did a... I like his music. Uh, Clark Cobain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really obscure. Maybe. Maybe Avant-garde. Yeah. Also, <laughs> it's yeah, so with that word. <laughs> but it's... Music is it's going in an interesting direction. So you guys are from Port Arthur. So, like, tell us about that. Like, what, what was it like growing up there? You just gotta watch your... Well, not now. It's actually been gentrified and it's such a nice neighborhood. Mm. But when we were growing up and when we were in high school... There would be, like, bar heads, like, searching out, like, your house, like, asking for help pretending. Mm. And then they'd look around in your, well, they'd look around through, like, the doorway. And then they'd, like, call their, like, boyfriends and stuff to, like, come rob the place. Has this place <laughs> influenced your brand, influenced your style, would you say? Yes, I consider us as hood goth, because we grew up in, like... The hood, yeah. 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 I guess, like, your environment and stuff, like, like influencing you, like, in some aspect, is going to, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, despite, like, us, like, you know, like, staying true to ourselves and being, like, fans of, like, maybe, like, different kinds of, like, you know, music than, like, our peers around us, well, we still, like, absorb, like, some, like, that influence and stuff, too, you know. So, whenever, like, we hear, like, uh, metal music or something, it, like, we're reminded about, like, so, some of the violent lyrics and stuff like that. You know, like, maybe, like, someone in the suburbs is, like, a fan of, like, that stuff, but we yeah, remember we back to, like, it. yeah, we've seen some of it we've and stuff. We've seen, like, know? people bleeding on, like, our porches. Like, somebody's boyfriend probably beat them, and they'd, like, run to your house for you to call the cops. And then you're like, mm, no, I'm going to mind my own business, but I'll call the cops for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and uh, that's actually, like, that used to be, like, a pretty well-known little scam and stuff like that, too. And yeah. you didn't, you wanted to help the, like, the people out. That happened, like, I think... At your house multiple times, oh, yeah. Hillary. When we lived like like blocks like away from each other, mm -hmm. but like growing up, we had such similar stories. It was like <laughs> I lived on Seventh Street. So yeah, it was mind know, blowing. And if stuff. you're from Port Arthur, you know how Seventh Street is. So, yeah. did you deal with this? I mean, I, I mean, I lived there, so obviously, when you're just trying to mind your own business, yeah. it's uh, it's kind of hard. Like especially, it's like two in the morning. You hear something like sounds like glass exploding. It's like two dudes just broke into someone's house to steal a TV. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or just to steal the coils from the um, AC. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. another crazy, like, yeah, it was like pretty... People breaking into, like, your, like, for your air conditioners and stuff like that, like, yeah, your window oh. unit and stuff like that. Yeah. People, yeah, the... Oh, what do they call it? They call it co a copper game. Yeah, yeah that's... They, oh. Yeah, they were, like, it was, like, rampant and stuff like that. And, like, and if you had, like, a window unit, they knew that you could, they could just, like, pull that out and, like, break into your house. <laughs> Man. Yeah, and so you had to be on the look. Just growing up, it wasn't like you lived in constant fear or anything like that. You just like grew up like with like a more sense of awareness about like your surroundings constantly. It's like am I being followed? Right. Are people like watching my house and stuff like that? Is is this guy like you know, uh, is, like is like riding by on a bicycle? Do I have to like look out? I hear you. Know? you. Wow. Well, one of the bands you guys mentioned earlier that you want to play personally is Knocked Loose. How'd you find that band? Probably Tumblr. Yeah. I have a pretty good following there, so I listen to a lot of music. Okay. Well, let's Wait, listen what, to it. What's your follower count, Hillary? <laughs> oh, yeah, tell us. Tell us. <laughs> you don't know. It's probably way low. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot to me. I have, like, 2,000. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's actually, like, a good source, like, for, like, a lot of like, upcoming bands and stuff like that, too. I remember, like, we found out about Neck Deep, like, pretty early on with mm -hmm. like their EP work or like things like you you'll find out about upcoming bands like they haven't even left their local scene right like we we heard about like the come up of like uh, the you know Midwest emo 
trend like uh, before like it really like you know, it exploded through Tumblr. Yeah. So like Tumblr's like been help uh, like a big aid like in like uh searching for new music and stuff too. Yeah, get on there. Obscure music. We also love that two thousand emo scene. Two thousand five emo scene. Yeah. Did you do the hair? The, the, yes, the, I had seen the, hair. I did the that jackets too. with the sleeves and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I had that. Everything you, my chemical romance. Huh? You did that too, Tuck? Yeah. Not really, no. What about you, hair. Alan? You had that? The the hippie the flippy hair? Uh, yeah, you it's got okay. You can. Yeah, I, I <laughs> no, I'm not ashamed of it. Or anything. I remember dying your see, hair. See, no, yeah, see, but <laughs> those are the times. <laughs> yeah, but like and it was a little bit different too. Lives. I bought yeah. these new like um, ear weights. Uh huh. And I love them. Oh, like man. Alan just started stretching his ears. I'm at about like one three eighths. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. All right, we'll talk more right after we listen to um, "Knocked Loose." That was a band, right? Yeah, Knocked Loose. Knocked Loose. I wanted to say Neck Deep. But that's <laughs> that's neck another deep. band. Neck Deep. <laughs> Who mentioned that? That's Me, like a I pop did. punk band. Yeah, that's a pop punk band. That's what oh, it was. Oh, Knocked Loose is going to be mad about that oh, one. Oh, oh, well. Oh. So it's like whatever we can do to help out, you know, our home countries or like, you know, or people in a worse off situation, you know, so that they don't have to like, you know, risk their lives yeah. to like, you know, to come up here. They have to fight human traffickers. They have to like, you know, it, it's a horrible gauntlet. That's true. Yeah, to come up here, you know? Yeah, that reminds me, like, this December, like, um, things have been kind of rough, but we've been staying positive. My mom passed away, um, so I donated her bed to, like, a family who was in need. Um, this elderly woman, I'm not going to say their names, mm -hmm. like, uh, she took in three orphans. Uh, they saw their parents commit suicide in front of them, so I wanted to give them her bed. And then we donated um, school supplies to Nicaragua school. Yeah. Oh, Hospital, yes. Miss Tish center? from the Hope Center. Yeah, the Hope Center on the west side of Puerto Like She helped me find um, a family that needed my mom's furniture. My mom was a very cleanly person. She was an art teacher oh, at Sam Houston School. I got you. Well, <laughs> what do you see for the future for Spooky Kids? Like, what do you guys, like, want and our long-term goal really has been like, you know, we want to go back to like these like third world countries and stuff like that. And we want to like actually where we can employ some of like these communities that we help out with like employment. Like if they could like start making some of like our products, some of like our merchandise and stuff, you know. And if we could get them like, like you know, a little bit of like work in, here and there, then they won't ever have to leave their home countries. You know, that's a big like you know like factor in like you know like the lack of like work and opportunities in these countries.